Hi. Are you filming or? So here we go. Welcome to Taos. This is what people do around here. These are watercolors, you know, that I make. You know, the bridge is it's a good subject, you know, and people like like that. You know, so here we go. As a filmmaker, I love working with landscapes and light. And to be honest, New Mexico is kind of blowing my mind on both counts. So this place is really special for artists because the light. It's all about the light. You know, you're in altitude, the air is really crisp, the shadows are really crisp, and the contrast between the shadow and the light is really, really incredible. And all the people that come here just look at the shadows they just, that have an artistic eye and they just go crazy, you know? I'm in New Mexico, a far cry from the bright city lights that I'm used to. More specifically, I'm in a colorful little town called Taos. And it's making me question why I haven't explored small towns more before. It had that kind of real country town vibe where people were interested where you're from. You know, people made eye contact and smiled at you and said good morning. Thank you. For years, this place has nurtured creative people and visionaries. The influences from three cultures, Spanish, Native American, and Anglo, all intertwined. And it's been a unique place that has inspired artists, musicians, and poets. Poets like Nata Chimomade. The sunsets are unlike anything. That's why I believe so many artists try to encapsulate that. It's heaven. It really does have a feeling here. You can sense the history. Would you be able to share any of your poems or your writing? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Love, give me a moment. 70 years until I'm 100. I've planned when I can slip away, pass into the sea like the others who may open by one suture, like a magnolia or a milkweed. Do you just walk around with a notebook in your hand? Do you capture these thoughts? I mean, I'd like to say I walk around with a notebook, but I don't. I just walk around with my phone. People here seem to have an affinity with the land, a consciousness, to work with it rather than dominate it which seems like a good way to be, because this kind of tough desert landscape, you want it to be on your side. I feel like I'm meeting people who think outside the box, live outside the box. People who are interested in breaking out of the white picket fence. They come here and they really do it. And nothing summed it up better than seeing these spaceship type things pop up from the landscapes as we were driving through the Mesa. Or perhaps I should say, Earth ships. It was here that I met Adam, and he took me through pretty much everything I needed to know about Earthships. Welcome to the Earthship. Holy moly. The first Earthship I met was Eve. Basically, we're using natural and recycled materials. We're using passive solar to provide heating year-round. The Earthship actually uses each drop of water at least four times before expelling it from the system, because obviously water is worth more than its weight in gold. So what we're doing is using the water from our hand sinks and our showers, then it's gonna be used to feed the botanical cells before being used on demand for our toilets. Because let's be honest, why are we using fresh, clean drinking water to wash our waste away? This reminds me of a scene from Star Wars. From the outside, it just looks like big piles of dirt. So the reason why we have a berm built up to the back of the house is so that we're able to tap into the ambient temperature of the planet, which is 58 degrees. Then we arrived at the prize jewel, the Phoenix. So this is a one-off. There is nothing else like this on the planet. The minute we walked in, it felt like there was a jungle and then there was a living room. So I've got two cockatiels and a parakeet in here. I have no living plants in my house. I actually don't have a green thumb, so I just felt like there's this benefit to having plants close by. We've got this fruiting calamasi lime tree, banana trees, 
It looked incredible, but then I just understood how beneficial it is for your spirit and for your body. And these people are just living completely off the grid. Hey, girls! And if you're a traveler, you can just experience this Earthship for one or two nights and then keep going. What do you think people struggle with when they decide to choose a life like this? Not having an endless supply of energy or water like they would in a traditional grid tied home. You have to be very conscientious about what your consumption patterns are. And it's not hard. It's yeah. just we've been conditioned to never think about it. Mm. As I was leaving, Adam told me about some hidden hot springs situated on the edge of the rushing Rio Grande River. I think travel takes you back to that that childlike self of seeing things for the very first time. Traveling evokes play and it evokes the curiosity that you would have when you're a kid. Oh. I've got city feet. I mean, all of this place, like the gorge is just spectacular. I can't even believe my eyeballs. I think it's, it's nature that is the grounding that we need in order to be truly grateful for what we have. And the ruggedness of New Mexico has really made me think about how I would like to live with the land rather than being removed from it. <laughs>